Welcome to the Open to Hope show. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria Horsley, with my daughter and co-host, Dr. Heidi Horsley. These shows are brought to you by the Open to Hope Foundation in partnership with the Compassionate Friends. Well, Heidi, we've got a wonderful guest today because we saw uh, her film when we were at Compassionate Friends, mm -hmm. and it was a wonderful film, A Love Never Dies, that she made with her husband, uh, Jimmy Edmonds. We're going to talk to you about our good friend, Jane Harris. Welcome to the show, Jane. Hi, Jane. Hi, Gloria, Heidi, and the team. And, and Mom, Jane and I have something in common because, and as, as do you, Jane is very involved with the Compassionate Friends in the UK, and she is on the Board of Trustees, and I am on the Board of Trustees here in the United States, and my mother was on the Board of Trustees for six years, so... We are all very, all of us are very involved in the Compassionate Friends, and we also partner with the Compassionate Friends at Open yeah. to Hope. Right. I'm, I'm passionate about the Compassionate Friends. You know, they kind of, um, after Josh died, it was my first port of call, really. When people went quiet, as they do, you know, towards bereaved families, I felt so lost, and I didn't know who to talk to. I felt incredibly isolated. Mm -hmm. And I went to a retreat the first year into my grieving journey, and it was wonderful because I was met at the gate of the retreat by someone who said, and what's, who are you here to remember? Oh. And I said, I'm here to remember Josh. And I just felt so reassured. And that weekend was the beginning of my journey, at, I suppose, of recovery, really. Mm -hmm. You started out as a filmmaker and in school, and then you stopped and became a psychologist and were in private practice for 25 years. Okay. And then you got back to film. My husband has, is, a, is an editor, was an editor, uh, still is an editor, um, and um, has received a BAFTA for his work, which is amazing. But we've always made films about personal stories, life stories. We like to help people to step into the shoes of others. Um, and the first film we made together was about my dad, actually, um, and his dementia and Alzheimer's. He was, um, he, he had a really bad time and ended up in a psychiatric hospital, which called itself a sort of dementia yeah. home. Yeah. And we made a film about that, which was to focus on person-centered care. But when Josh died in 2011, it made absolute sense to us to make a film about his funeral. Uh -huh. It's a really strange thing to do, isn't it? But actually, we're so glad we did because that has, was, I suppose that helped us to realize that there's no rules around grief. And there's actually very few rules around funerals that basically you do what's best because funerals are for the living as much as for the people who've left. Or right, who've left. sure. You know, I, I love the fact that you took what you and your husband did and, and used it because I think it's important for people that are watching this show to think about, you know, if you're a journalist or a gardener or, you know, there are ways that you can use that past creativity to create things in memory of your loved one. Yes, I think that when your child dies, you lose hope, you lose belief in the world, everything, all the foundations that you've built collapse. Mm -hmm. And part of rebuilding those foundations is doing what you can do best. Now, for us, filmmaking, I suppose, has always been the thing that we've done together. And really, I suppose that led us to start the Good Grief Project, out of which A Love That Never Dies came. And that's a, that, that's a project that looks at creative ways of processing um, your grief, being active, doing, doing whatever it is that you feel comfortable with, mm -hmm. um, rather than feeling, I suppose, cut off and isolated. Because as you know better than anyone, grief can take you to very isolated places. Um, and there's so many amazing bereaved people out there who want to communicate with each other. It's a way of connecting. I was wondering what kind of things people did. You said they got very active in their grieving process, which I love because when we turn our grief outward, it is very empowering. Yes. So, and, and outward to service or whatever, what kind of things would people do that help them? Well, we started using photography, actually. We did oh. photography workshops um, and Cruise Bereavement, which is a huge organization in the UK, asked us to run some workshops for them. But basically that's about continuing bonds. And what we said to people was, bring a photo of your child and you'll take something new away. And that can seem like a miraculous kind of wish, but you know, basically we said, you don't have to have any technical skills. 
all you need to be able to do is to bring a photo with you and we will help you take something that will help you continue that bond with your child who's no longer here. Here we have uh, Alex Brown. This is Josh. And oh, that's perfect. Uh, <laughs> so cute. Josh is very young in that picture, but we have photos. Our house is full of photos. And in fact, in A Love That Never Dies, one of the people we interview who's amazing at expressing anger, which us women are not very good at doing, she said, just because my child has died, everyone thinks I should take down all my photographs. <laughs> and of course, you know, her house was full of photographs. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's things like that, you know, that, that, that sort of help people, you know, just having imagery around, right. um, doing whatever it is that makes you feel comfortable. And I guess not trying to be what other people want you to be, but being what you need to be. So, mm -hmm. The doing and the active side is about mindfulness, it's about photography, it's actually also about things like boxing or walking. So mm -hmm. our son is part of our active grief retreats now and he runs active workshops, which yeah. might be men walking side by side together because it's easier than talking. It might be boxing, it might be running, but right. basically it's about siblings and men, all of us having an opportunity to do whatever we feel most comfortable with at the level so Jay, did you say did you say boxing boxing whatever i love that idea because sometimes we're angry at, at the way that our life has turned out and what it looks like right now because it's not Absolutely. the life that we envisioned and to be able to box it out i think is really there it would be really therapeutic Absolutely. And as you're a sibling and he's a sibling and siblings mm -hmm. will often talk about the fact that they're always forgotten. Yes. People don't remember. They say, how's your mum? I mean, my daughter, Rosa, who's now 25, she was 18 when Josh died. She would come home and say to me, mom, everyone keeps asking me how you are. I just wish somebody would ask me who I am. Exactly. Um, yes. And that kind of broke my heart. But I'm very proud to say that both of our kids are going on a compassionate friends sibling retreat at the end of the month. Their choice. Uh, and they're going completely off their own bats. And that makes me feel good that they're managing their grief with siblings and they don't have to worry about us. Uh, I shouldn't be that to you as a mummy, but... <laughs> and that is so important because the more we get around other siblings, the more that we realize that what we're going through is normal and other, other people are going through it as well. And a lot of times when the siblings are all together, we don't talk about our grief. We just have fun. But exactly. being in that environment with other people that have lost brothers and sisters, we realize we're not alone. We're not the only ones. So I love that they're doing that. And I've got to show you something that I have here. Yep. Here's a picture of my brother. Oh, wow. <laughs> Can you see him? That's He's right there in the middle, the blonde. Amazing. Beautiful boy. That's him, that's him at football camp. Anyway, I put him on my desk because he is definitely the inspiration for all the work that I do. So I love that you're bringing up the sibling piece too, because we often do feel like we're, our loss is minimized and unacknowledged and forgotten. So thank you. I certainly loved at the Compassionate, when you invited us to the States for the Compassionate Friends massive event. I mean, it was so big, it was overwhelming. But the sibling speaker at the end just broke my heart. She was inspirational. The power those siblings had yes. was just such a model of hope for people. You know, yeah. they were no longer worrying about their parents. They were thinking about themselves. And that for me, as a mother, but also as a yeah. therapist, was just very liberating because we, we all worry about our kids. As your kids show and Heidi shows, I hope everyone watching this early on will realize that people do get through. They yeah. do have happy lives again, you know. It's seven years for us because Josh died in 2011. And I... I think everyone's experience is very different, but I noticed something shifting at year five for me. Uh -huh. um, I don't know, you know, I've found a few people who feel the same, but, but now myself and Jimmy, you know, we, we run workshops and we also participate in Compassionate Friends retreats. And it is so humbling and, 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 and painful to see people in those early years of yeah. grief. And you know, that they are at such a painful stage and you know that the edges will get less rough as mm -hmm. time goes on. But you can't tell people that. Another thing, Jane, is that you and your husband are still together. There is this myth out there that everybody who has a child is going to get divorced. I mean... It's a real myth. I mean, the thing is, we very much wanted to model that in our film. So we, have, we, are, we are threaded through the film, as you know. And the, the film is a sort of metaphor for our journey, our loss. It's a road trip across America. You know, as you know, we drove from New York to San Francisco. Yeah. Mad kind of idea, just the two of us making this film, hoping we get it in mainstream cinemas, and we have. But the point about that is, 
that our relationship, like every relationship, has its ups and downs. And it's really mm. important to remember that if a relationship's in trouble, it's in trouble. Right. And it was yeah. before you got had well, a we loss. We weren't in trouble. But the point is, is that yeah. if your relationship's in trouble and then your child dies, then yeah. obviously you're yeah. going to be in bigger trouble. But right. the idea that relationships fall apart when your child dies is very dangerous because it leaves it leaves families feeling very anxious and I do know of someone who went to a GP recently and the GP said oh my goodness if your child died you know you're you're bound to split up yeah and that is very unhelpful so yeah. the film is a kind of metaphor it's our journey across America it's our different ways of grieving men and women grieve differently as we all know or if we don't know we find it we all <laughs> grieve differently um and 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 the film basically looks at couples it looks at siblings but it's a love story as much as a story about death and loss. It's and a love it's, story. It's, Myself and Jimmy felt really strongly that it was time that we got grief out the margins. We uh, were sick to the teeth of being told, oh yeah, just go and show it to that little group there, that little group there. Yeah. We, we really feel strongly that, that the films, the books, the writings around death and grief need to be seen by the friends of the bereaved. Right. by the professionals who serve the bereaved you yeah. know it's not just about a little ghetto though I would never underestimate the importance of of peer-to-peer -peer support but it's time that people sat up and thought about the implications and the cost of our health right our health physically psychologically it's absolutely a it's a big deal. A lot of us get very ill after our child dies. One of the people in our film, a wonderful woman, she said, you know, she was ashamed to laugh. She was ashamed mm -hmm. to eat the food she liked because she thought that people would judge her. Mm -hmm. She was afraid to be joyous about anything. And then, of course, she learned that she had to just right. step away from other people's expectations of her. Mm -hmm. Because if you try to meet the expectations of people, you end up in a cul-de-sac. You have to do what's right for you. Like with that. support peer-to-peer -peer support i think is just worth everything compassionate friends uk is going from strength to strength um and it runs groups and it runs it runs retreats for siblings it runs retreats for people who've lost their only child um there's so many different groups fathers jimmy jimmy now runs fathers groups which is a remarkable thing and it's amazing to see the dads who go into that group. As you know, very often men will go into groups and they'll just think, I shouldn't be here, there's no point. And they just discover the support that can be found by being alongside other men. But the Compassionate Friends UK is so much smaller than what you have in the States. However, it is a lifeline for so many um, and it's growing. We've revamped the website, we've, we've got this wonderful film, Say Their Name, which basically just sums up, we took the brief and it was about just saying, say their name, say it out loud, just do yeah. it. This is all about community. For me, the big word is community. We have to work together to help each other through this. Uh, absolutely, totally what important. What we have internalized, what we have experienced is beyond words. And sometimes words ju just don't cut it. But if we work together to get that kind of strength and that hope out there, it's, it's fabulous. It's just life-saving actually i think i can really say that for so many people who can't believe they can survive and i know that in our film one of the mothers talks about you know she's 10 years into her grief um but in the in the early years she just wanted to die and she talks very openly about that she also talks very openly about the fact that 10 years on the grass has never looked greener and the skies never looked bluer now who would have thought she never thought that that was possible Right. Well, listen. I, I wanna I wanna thank you for being on this show and and for making this fabulous film. A love never dies. It's fabulous and and much love to your husband. Yeah. And tell people how they can find you. What's your web address? Yep. So the film, the actual web address for the film is www dot a love that never dies film dot com. So it's all one. A love that never dies film dot com. Good Grief Project is the charity that we've set up which looks at creative and active ways of grieving the Good Grief Project. Compassionate Friends in the UK, basically, the web address for that, which lists all the activities, is www.tcf.org.uk.
and that will take them into the beautiful new website for the compassionate friends which lists all the retreats and all the activities sibling retreats workshops um, amazing stuff that's going on all around the year. Well, yeah. thank you so much for being on the show today and for everything that you do for the world. And thank you so okay, much. Thank you. Thanks so cool. much, Jane, for, for bringing great. hope to so many out there that are grieving. Thank you. And so Heidi so and I, and I'm sure Jane, always want to remind everyone that if you've lost hope, please lean on ours until you find your own. And thanks for watching and God bless.